Hey guys, Amy from Colorado Mountain Living, and I'm all excited today. So it's not just because I had a great workout at the gym earlier, pump some iron. We got action going on behind me here. We've I, in the two hours I had gone away from the house this morning, I come back to got one wall almost all the way framed up and ready to raise. We're starting with the wall on the far end first. So we got my dad there in the white, Brian in the blue, and making some fast progress getting the walls framed up. So so right here is what we rented. Um, Brian picked out a forklift style material handler. This is what we're going to be using to do the lifting of the timbers and the walls. So this arrived this morning. And here's the big beam all assembled. This is the one that's gonna run the length of the house. And you can see, see how massive it is in comparison to this tractor and the lumber stack behind it. Also the variations in the wood stain. It's very interesting how the Douglas fir will pick out red and yellow based on what kind of wood, you know, just depending on the grain of the wood. So. It's just, there's a lot of variation in the stain. I think it's gonna add to a lot of interest in, in the wood. The stack of lumber is finally going down. They're using that right now. But keeping you updated on the progress. So this is just day one. They've been started, they started at about seven o'clock this morning. And already we got one wall almost all the way done. So guys, I wanted to give you an update on the garden and show you what's been happening since about five, six weeks ago when I planted things, I'll kind of show you what's worked and what hasn't, but uh, I think you'll find it interesting. I was surprised for sure. So the strawberries have already passed, but the plants have become quite large. Like the leaves have at least tripled in size and they are sending out runners. So on this one here, you can see there's a runner coming out. So these are getting established. There's only a couple of plants that are still kind of puny. I mean, this one's a little bit puny compared to, you know, the ones next to it, which are pretty robust. I mean, get my shoe in there for comparison. They've definitely leafed out quite a bit. So hardy, hardy plants. All right, so the greens that I planted, these went in uh, at least mid-June. And this was the spinach patch and they're, it's coming up. Now there is a rogue arugula, a rogue arugula. Can I say that 10 times fast? Here's a rogue arugula in the spinach patch, and that's the arugula seems to be really doing better than everything else. So spinach is coming up. I've had to pick off a couple of buds. It's wanting to bolt because it's been hot. Um, we've been fortunate with a lot of rain this summer, so the spinaches and the leafy greens have been doing well despite a lot of attention from me. So here's the big surprise. This is the zucchini plant that I picked up at Home Depot for $2 and it's large. And we've got some decent sized zucchini in here. So I've got at least three or four. These are looking like seven inch zucchini. They were six inch yesterday. So um, got a lot more buds and a lot more fruits down in here. So definitely gonna do more zucchini next year. I think I'm gonna do pickles with these and zucchini noodles. I like those. Um, so really thrilled with the way that the zucchini plant came out. I mean, what a surprise there. I did a lot of transplanting of succulents. These are the kind of um, cactus-like plants that seem to grow well in this climate. Some of them I just took from around the property. Hens and chicks and stone crop and things like that. The stone crop is a nice yellow, but it's pretty much faded by now. I think the flowers are past. But those are establishing pretty well. Uh, a lot of the plants that I got from the plant sale. This is one is called purple lupine and it looked like it wasn't gonna make it and now it's bushing out, so that's great. Here's a hen and chick that sent off a flowering runner. It's about to flower out here. So that's really cool. Never really seen the whole stock of the hen chick succulent before. Here's some kale. This is my largest one, so I've got, well, I didn't thin them, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I don't know, two dozen plants here almost, 
20 plants and I'll let those go for a while. And then on the end, these are the mixed greens, mostly arugula, which is my one of my favorite greens. So a lot of arugula looking pretty big and bushy and then some mixed lettuce next to it. Um, and a little bit of kale, some mixed lettuce greens. Things kind of got condensed in this area in this bottom corner of the square. But look at that arugula up there. Arugula for the win, guys. I'm glad I love it. And then here's a rhubarb plant. That was just maybe four leaves when I first got it. And now, you know, all the little leaves have kind of come out and it's sending out some more. So I don't think you can really harvest it for a few years, at least not until these ribs get at least the size of celery. So um, maybe a couple more years on that, but who knows? It's seeming to like this spot. It gets a little bit more shade in the morning, but this area, this garden area, is a minimum of 10 hours of sun a day and things are doing really good. I think as long as they stay moist and wet, it's it's a gardener's paradise up here. The Topsoil is pretty good, and I think with a little bit more fertilizer, I could really have a nice garden here. Might put another bed down here um, next summer, maybe put two down there and try some other plants. Cause... Oh, and quickly, I checked on the bees earlier this morning, just out of curiosity, because I checked on them last week as well uh, to s assess their honey. And it's one of those situations where the hive is full of bees and there's no honey. I mean, there's no extra honey. So sometimes you get a hive that produces lots of bees. When you get a really great queen in there, she just lays eggs like crazy and fills up all the empty space with brood. And that's what the situation I have. And that is actually good because you're gonna have a really large colony to overwinter with. And I'll just have to be diligent when she stops laying to feed them and feed them so they have 100 pounds of honey to survive on for the winter. But there probably won't be any honey for harvest unless they surprise me in the next couple of so weeks. So this is the Nanking Cherry. This is the really, the bush, tree bush that I was really excited to get. And look at all the dead leaves. It's like somehow the tree was not getting the moisture even though I was watering it on a regular basis. I mean, these leaves don't seem dried out. The tips seem dried out. All these leaves fell down. Um, I don't know what's going on with the tree. It's very disappointing. It looks like I'm losing it because I don't know if it can survive with just a few leaves on it. But I don't know. You know, it's too bad. It, you know, it was $30 for this little bush too. And if it makes it, it's really going to be a miracle. But I don't really know, you know, what to say about that. I mean, I water all the time. And it's not like it's overwatered because I'm not watering it every day. But... It's just for somehow it's not really seeming like it's thriving. I don't know. And then I got the surface berry, which I was thrilled about because that was really taking off. And then I come over to the surface berry and it's drooped over it. Now look at it, it's all brown. Um, it totally died on me. And so I was like wiggling it around thinking, what the heck, what happened? And then I see something completely gnawed off the roots. So we definitely have a mole vole situation where, you know what, I had a great <laughs> small little berry tree about to become a big tree and a month later um, it has no roots. So that total huge bummer. I, you know, have to rethink about if I plant a tree. I mean, I'm glad this wasn't a $200 apple tree, but it's still a $30 bush. I mean, $60 between this one and the cherry tree. Um, I'd have to do some kind of chicken wire around the root system. I have to look into that to see what would um, work to be able to allow this to not get attacked by burrowing rodents, because what a disappointment. Uh, I was really excited to see that take off. So, it's just interesting that, you know, the, um, the garden's fine. Nothing's touching anything in the garden. It's barely protected. I guess they think they have enough vegetation throughout the hillside to, to chew on whatever they want. And perhaps I, you know, located my trees too close to rodent holes. I'm not sure. I mean, there's rodent holes all up and down the hillside, but in the garden, what's different is that Brian had scraped off the dirt into more of like a flat area. So maybe he destroyed their habitat and they relocated. I don't, I don't know. So, um, 
it's definitely a consideration if we do more gardening in the future is to think about burrowing animals and how that might be destroying things, especially if we have root crops like carrots and beets and things like that. But really disappointed about the service berry and the cherry tree. There's possibly still hope for the cherry tree. I'll keep an eye on it and keep treating it until it's just sticks, I suppose. <laughs> but I tried pulling that out of the ground as well like the service berry just ripped right out because there was no roots but that one still seems to be rooted into the ground so i think that there's still um there's still uh, a root system there so I, i'm not sure why it's dying whatever i i can't figure it out i don't know but um so before i spend a, before we spend a lot more money on other fruit trees i'm going to rethink what i'm doing with planting them and uh, protecting the root system uh, and location wise thinking about where that may they may be do the best but so that's the update from the gardening side So now that the entire wall has been framed, uh, the next step is to try to raise it. So dad was saying that he was concerned if we came in with a forklift from the edge and lifted it, he thought that would be too risky, that it would probably bend. So he was suggesting right where he's sitting right now is cut a hole above the window to thread the strap through and that way you can minimize the tension on the entire frame of the wall and that way it'll be more centered. So uh, they're gonna get ready to cut into it, make a temporary. Yep. Yep. Whoa! You wanna go all the way underneath, right? No, I'm going on the outside. Oh! That's what? Yeah. We're shy. Hmm. Doesn't go past the peak. I need to go past, yeah. Uh, okay. I'm sure we can find one Okay, so the next morning, they got everything in position, lined up the lift, and figured out the angle of the strap, added additional chain to the end of the strap, since the strap was a little bit too short to clear the peak over here. So we got additional chain on it. And then they kind of jacked up the ends here with some two by fours underneath, for so a little bit of space. So the next part, is the lifting and positioning of the very first wall of our house. And as you can see here, we got a good rain last night, so everything is really wet. So hopefully that doesn't pose any problems. Ryan just got in the lift here. Dad's gonna tell him where to position it.
Okay, they're gonna leave it there and then they're gonna brace it. Oh god, it made me nervous. So they're gonna probably stick some posts in there and brace it up and then uh, I think maybe pushing it from the other side, we'll see. So they put down some blocks and they're gonna be bracing it up. The limitations with this lift is that there's not enough boom or extension up here as it said. It said 42 foot reach but they're only getting about 30 foot. So you know with it being a 22 foot peak you can't get on the diagonal the extension that they need to be able to get it. So got all the bracing now adjusted. So two on each side. Ooh, still pretty nervous. The bracing is holding it right now. The slack in the line. And I was gonna try to unhook the strap. You got a long stick to take the strap off. I think the next step is to roll back the fork and then push it. Take the. Uh, yeah, see, we came down twice. Put a lot of pressure on those outside. That's why I let go. Yep. Making a little pusher attached to the forks there. That's the only way. And when we we'll push it, I think we'll push it right where that strap is. Yeah. You know, check the widest part right there. Just keep pushing. Now I'm going to unhook that one there. These will come, they'll come down as, as we go down. I probably unscrew them. If they were, well, if they were attached up there, you just unscrew them down here, then they would stay there. Right. You need, or no, or you can make ourselves a, a 16, put one in all the birds. Oh, we'll have this underneath it, holding it up. Oh, yeah, until we get it on it. I'd like to be able to grab that stupid strap and uh -huh. something tie it so when we go straight. You know, I got the other strap. With you. No, just so I don't go yeah, yeah. that way. I want to keep attention. Yeah. You want me to hit it where? Right where that, right on top of that strap. Okay. <laughs> Gonna undo this brace.
you might be wondering how is it not how's it lined up to the edge and not slipping off the edge of the house so see how there's boards up here keep it from slipping off the edge so it lines it up there pretty tall when you look at it from this angle and that bracing will come off up there So that did it. It's up. First wall's up, everybody. Oh, okay, I can breathe now. That was kind of scary. <laughs> Brian's going for a ride on the forks so he can get the strap out. Don't do this at home. He says, don't do this at home. Well, guys, not too bad for a day's worth of work. <laughs> they got the first wall up. I know today is technically day number two this morning, but uh, now it's all secure, so now they can get to work on the next wall and maybe see if they can get that up by the end of the day. We'll see what happens. Keep you informed. And I hope to get some of the footage of the beams going up, although I'm not gonna be around Saturday or Sunday. Maybe I'll do some time lapse of that. Or I might have another camera crew member arriving, so we might be able to catch that. But thanks guys, hope you enjoyed that. It was really exciting for me. So um, we'll keep you updated and stay tuned. And if, uh, we got a lot more coming this the next few days. So a lot of progress. Take care.